Let me run my mouth. Sorry, Cardi guys. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor
uh, the best of all worlds there in the music. Yeah. Um, so who's the musical brains do? Oh wow, Larry, Larry Smith. Larry Smith, Larry Smith, Smith is our producer. He's like Quincy Jones. That's what I was gonna ask you. He's, about. He's, he, he has all his name on all the songwriting credits. Yeah. He produced the album. Too. He produced the album and. and uh, he did Run DMC before this mm -hmm. album too, so he he's the man behind the plight of rap music in the music world today. I, I think um, he's done another group called the Fat Boys, and he's done works with Curtis Blow, etc. There's so many people that he's, he's done Grandmaster Flash. Now he's done the new Grandmaster Flash album. So it, it's him who in, in rap music who's been constantly competing with himself, and he he strives for that little bit more each and every time. He tries to, as he said, kick. The last person's album ass he worked on each time out, so he tries to kick the last record in the behind each time. So, so he's going for new and more innovative stuff. And we got people in, in London, Pete Harris, who who is a whiz. He, he oh, yeah. he's a whiz on the Fairlight computer, and and he's so incredible. So I and Brian Chuck News. So like I said again, like the team concept of the whole thing. We know each and every time when we go out there what we want. And the thing that separates Houdini from other rap groups is. Not only the beat, not only the melody, but the sound. We concentrate more than, uh, uh, oh, on sound. sound than I think anybody else does. The sound of the beat, the sound of our voices, or uh, the sound of our voices on the beat, the sound of our voices, the music and the beat, etc. So sound is very important to us, and these guys know that, and they work every year knowing when who didn't come back around, knowing that they gotta have some deaf sound for who didn't, because this is what time it is. So the sound is very important, and we concentrate a whole bunch on that. How'd you get hooked up with Larry Smith? Oh, man. Well, uh, through my manager, <laughs> Russell Simmons. Uh, we used to work with him. Yeah, they were partners. Uh -huh. On the Run DMC thing. Yeah. And at the time. And it was more like, he was more like a relay man, really, at first. Well, so, like, there was a gap when we were working in England before with Connie Planks mm -hmm. and um, Roy Carter. was it? Roy, Roy Carter. Carter. And, and we did one song with Thomas, Thomas Dolby. Dolby. There was a gap between what we had at home and what was the European sound of then. And especially at that time, the sound from England was what was happening. And Connie Planks was from Germany, and there was like a, 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 there was something missing. They couldn't understand what we were saying directly because we didn't play an instrument exactly, you know. And it was a feeling they couldn't understand what was going on at home. So we brought Larry, who knew the best of both worlds, to relay what we felt to what he felt to them, so. He was the bridge man. And then you just kind of edged out the other guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they moved on and we moved on. Right. They knew just how much they could contribute to each piece of music without taking over the, the piece of music completely. So we just say, we just have to know when to say, stop, that's all we want. And when the night gets into us, they will we have to say, stop, that's all we want. And when we get to our part, we say, stop, that's all we want. And we have a combination of all three, the best of all three. And that's what we go with, usually. How about the next album? You think you're gonna stick with Larry's man? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have Larry's yeah. couple of albums, I believe. And um, after that, I don't know. We might we might switch around if Larry like to stay. I don't know. We, we might want to stay, but we haven't got we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for the next couple of albums, we're gonna have Larry with us on our side. We talked about the uh, the British stuff uh, being the happening stuff. You know, when you recorded with Connie Planks and Thomas Dolby. Right. Why is that an example? Why, why did you choose those guys? The Europeans? We were finding ourselves at that point. We didn't know who was the right producer for us. We didn't know what was the right sound for Houdini. So each each producer that we came in contact with, I believe that we we, we, we learned something. We found something uh, from their technique that we liked, that, that, that we adapted to our style. Never too much of one, but a little bit of each. It had something to do with the, with the, with the making of, of, the, of the final product, of the final Houdini sound. And Larry Smith was the icing on the cake. Hmm. It was just all the elements that we were missing. We had a little. We wanted a little bit of a European feel in our music, to so make our music a little bit more universal than the average. And um, then we added um, our, what we felt that we should add. And Larry Smith was just the whole hip hop element, the whole um, the experience. There's a lot of Pete Harris in us too. Oh yeah, Pete Harris has been with us since the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's that's a lot. There's a lot of people consistent. But aside from Houdini, Pete Harris has been there just for as long as Houdini's been there. So Pete Harris gives us. Um, he was behind songs like One Love, oh, Friends, Friends, etc. Um, Escape, he helps Escape. Master the sound. So, up. so Pete Harris is is, is definitely a, a part of, of the team, and we need we need him. If it wasn't there, if he wasn't there, we would sound different. Much. Different. We'd sound different. I'm gonna say we wouldn't sound good, but we would sound different. 
So um, and, and he knows it. So uh, we kind of we gotta give Pete credit now. So I know if this gets back to London and Pete doesn't hear his name, then he's gonna be disappointed. So we definitely gave him a plaque. Actually, we'll probably let Pete produce two, one or two songs on the next album. Yeah, you uh -huh. know, so that's nice. for all due respect. Yeah. You know. Well, he is responsible for the synthesizer. I think you have to give him due credit. Oh, that's, that's the first thing you kind of think about when you, the you, whole you, you the whole body of the song. The whole, the whole body is a lot of the song. And I don't think he gets enough credit. And it's not only our music that he works with because the Jive people have um, so many different artists that I think Pete has participates in. And I don't think he gets his just due. So, so we're kind of trying to acknowledge him now because um, we realize what his contribution. is incredible <laughs> definitely so, I, I remember at first at one time there was only 10 good to great feel like computer players so at the time at the time it was only two what, in the beginning it was like five it was like John Congress yeah, 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 in John 83 Congress. something like that yeah, and it was like about four yeah. feel like computer operators in the whole world and I think um, one, I think John Collins took Pete Harris under the wing for a couple of years. And by the time he came back, Pete Harris was on his own. He had his own fair right, and yeah. he was ready to go for it. Now right now, I don't think nobody. Oh my God! I don't think nobody spends more time with that fair right computer than I know. I don't know everybody, but that I know than Pete Harris. And he he he, he lives, eats, and sleeps the fair right computer. Maybe he might be into another computer. You know, I haven't been out there to hang out they with. They got a new fair right. And so is Vincent Clark and Tom. Oh my no, God! No, no, These guys are so incredible. So Pete Harris, he, he's definitely the ideal man for us, you know. So we kind of happy that we got a chance, get a chance to work with him every year. And even though we get on his nerves sometimes, we get on our nerves. Cause he surpasses us in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, some things his, his technique is so far beyond us. Like we, we aren't there yet, and there's certain things we do at home, he's he's not used to. Like they're not used to someone just doing focus over the drum beat. So it knocks him. And even with the songs. That he has to take me, even when you do songs, he takes out all the music oh, and makes true. you do it over the drum beat. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, and then he puts the music back on top. This way, whenever you have a drop or a break, you're always on the beat. Always on. So <laughs> you know, and singers do it uh, vice versa. They always sing over all the music. So that way it's easy to put the fills and take the fills out, put the bridge here, take the bridge out. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a combination that, 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 that works for us. Everyone has their own style, their own <coughs> uh, way that they do things, and this is the way that we do things, and it works. I mean, so um, hopefully, this time around, we can go double platinum. <laughs> I mean, I we're all on the verge of going platinum, like, um, I think we got two albums, both our albums, just like, just good. I mean, like, a few more records and we'd have been playing. <laughs> a few. I mean, we could go out and buy ourselves. We should go out and buy ourselves. We'd be good at them, you know what I'm saying? But for sure, sometimes. So I, I hope this is our calling now. Um, I hope this is our calling. Uh, so we just going to wait around and see. And the competition's not getting any easier, I'm telling you. we got guys like the Beastie Boys. we got LL Cool J. we got Definitely Run. LL um, B. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's so hard now. So yeah. the thing about it, I think the thing that, that makes a, a rap group, um, that separates rap groups apart are, are, are the distinct, distinctive styles. Having um, a, a style that separates them from everyone else, and um, I think us is the melodic um, aspect of rap music. I think our melodies and our singing choruses, and uh, along with our meaningful rap, sets us aside from everybody else. So I think that's our bread and butter. Right now, until we come across something else that we can work. <coughs> How about not to get to you, uh, the, the Grandmaster? The great Grandmaster. The great Grandmaster. Yeah, I think you knocked a lot of people's socks off. With your technique there. He's incredible with chopsticks. I never, and, and the thing about it, he never scratched his chopsticks before he came to Japan. He said, "I'm gonna scratch your chopsticks." And the, the night before, yes, last night was was the time that he put something on, and he, he scratched with the chopsticks. So he just said he was gonna do it, and he did it. It wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't anything like that, he just did it. So that was incredible. How many years have you been doing that now? Since 1977. 1977. Uh, what first got you started? Was it just kids in the neighborhood doing it? Yeah, that's what got me started. Like in the parks, we used to go out in Queens and see all the neighborhood DJs get together and go up against one another, see who's the best in the neighborhood. 
And that's where all the rappers came from all over. They might have a cousin that lives in Manhattan, one lives in Queens, one lives in the Bronx. And they all bring them and say, yeah, I go to school with this guy who's in the group. And they come all out to Queens. And then they start going against one another. Then it made me want to get into it. I started watching them. Then I said, yo, I'm going to go buy me two turntables. I started out with some portable turntables. So turn one receiver up and the other one down. And then I went and got two techniques, the SL220s. That's the one Flash used to do. That was belt drive. But we had the, like the... Um, Match under the felt under at that time. We couldn't afford like the direct drives then in them days. Then that's when they came out with direct drive. And that's about the time when they had the um, 1800s. And they said one day, I said, I'm going to get down with the disco twins. These were the best DJs in Queens. I said, one day I'm going to get on the turntables. They had a system that had 10,000 watts. And it, my, that dream came true. I got on the turntables and everybody seen my talent. And you know, that's what time gave me um, the answer that I'm ready. It's an everlasting battle for DJs. Mm -hmm. There's some new stuff out there <laughs> that they, they've updated, the up-and-coming DJs. It's, it's only updates of what they should do with the slide fade, like the re 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 or to be real or stuff. They just call it the Transformers crack. The only reason why they're doing this like this way, too, is because it's a different mixer that's updated that allows it. So it's an everlasting battle for DJs, too. And then it's always the trick part. And then it's the timing. So everybody has to keep progressing. Because the new guys is coming up to knock your socks off just like you watched and took advantage of what was there before you. So it keeps you, you always got to go. You always got to go. The new styles are rapping like Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick. You know, more like the Broadville style. If that's the thing, you have to put as much as that that's in you into your show and into your up and coming records. Hmm. I'm right over my head here because, you know, I'm totally unfamiliar with this stuff. What, what right. makes a good disc job? I mean, uh, um, in our show, it would, I'd say not being too busy, but we give the DJ a spotlight. The most important thing about a DJ, as far as the rappers being on stage, is being reliable. Because, yeah. I mean, we rap, um, I mean, we depend solely on the turntables. Yeah. And if something happens to them turntables, yeah, and them big jump where they skip us for some reason, then we're completely off base now. We got to find our way back. Um, so I think the most important thing is, is to be reliable. Then you get down to the aspect of, of talent, individual talent that other DJs are going to respect. And that's speed scratching. You, it's called back spinning. And the thing about it, you don't use headphones to find your way back a certain part of music. You just have to remember by spinning. Well, I guess you better explain it because you know more about it than I do. Well, it's like, when I, like I was telling you in 77 when I started, like all the DJs used to spin back back then. But I noticed when we went on the road and we first started touring, a lot of DJs wasn't doing it. So I started to think about it, then I said I'd go back to the old school, how we should do it back then. And it's like, around the country, they didn't know about backspinning. Or they might have seen it a couple of times, maybe through Flash, but Flash wasn't doing it no more back in the shows. And when I started doing it, it was like I updated it, and it made everybody want to know how to do backspin off. They look at me like, how could you do this with no headphones? So it amazed the crowd. So how, like, how did you do it? Well, it's just like, it's like, yeah, yeah, like timing. And you know, like, the label on your record. Like, a lot of people mark their record so they know where it's going to land. But I don't mark it. I could just get on anybody's turntable, like, and just take a look at where this is. I pace it right here. And this, and I just watch it. I follow it. You know, with the, with the name of the label on the, on the record appears, at, at a certain point um, on that label, as, as the record is spinning, is where the part of the yeah. record where you want to scratch, where you want to find it. Uh -huh. So you back spin until you get back to that to that part of the label, and then you let it go. And supposedly, it's supposed to be on the right until side. You the so yeah. Yeah. Until you get the rhythm. Until you get the rhythm. Once you feel it, you, once you've been doing it for a long time, once you feel it, you, it's you more natural. Yeah. 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 Do you ever wake up like, after a long night and finally don't have it that day? Well, there's different, I, I didn't say, there's different techniques that we started using to, to help control it and the balance of, like, we have hand with, uh, wrist weights for them. Mm -hmm. and you but practice with wrist weights on. Is that right? Yeah, yeah so your hands, be, your hands be real heavy when you're practicing yeah. and you'll mess up a lot practicing until you keep it steady practicing. And when you take them off, it's like this, it's this touch. It's just go. Sometimes you get... Sometimes it gets too fast. Really you too have to fast. separate it further for them because mm -hmm. the hand weights make you go too fast. But so now there's nothing on your hand and your hands is flying. Yeah. All that kind of working out, you must be talking about the video games. That's chick ass on it. What's Pac-Man? They got that out there. What's Pac-Man? Yeah, I know. 
I heard the, the needle uh, bounce a couple of times. Is yeah. that supposed to happen or just that? That's just well, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a hazard of the train. Yeah, just can't and, and, and by being up that high that night, the, the lights, lights, the lights were so the heavy. The lights, the lights walk. Hit the record. The, the record gets like um, sweaty. Uh -huh. The moist of it is real soft. It's like. That makes the record more slippery. Uh -huh. And it starts warping. You actually start yeah. seeing in certain records, you start seeing them, if they stay on, you start seeing them warp. Because like, especially I'm up that high, the lights is right on it. So if I was further down on the floor where they was, it would lights would hit it that hard. But you guys could sort of pick up front, right? Yeah. 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 You kind of help them out, then, uh -huh. you know, and try to cover it up and let them get a chance to get it back on cue, and then it goes back to it. So we just. We kind of like, um, yeah, we go back and forth and help each other out and we read each other and we communicate with each other doing, doing all parts of the show. Um, um, even when it's time to drop a record and we, I thought we might turn around and ask them, do you have the record ready and what record's coming on next? Let's make sure everybody knows and then we'll take it and go into the routine from there. So so we take our time and then we, we don't exactly just run through the whole thing. We kind of take our times and we get, we get cues from each other and we, and, and we drop, we, um, <coughs> Um, different aspects of our routine or according to schedule. Yeah, just like the world, if it's a weak spot in the floor and I could feel the table shaking, I would go down, yo. Still, yeah, that's, that's why, that's that's why it's always a lot, need a lot of contact. Yeah. But sometimes the music you can't hear, so that's why you even see us a lot, we dance and we always watch. Mm -hmm. And it's always a lot of moving back and forth, turn around laughing, just to keep that contact to say, yo, bang, bang, bang. Oh, you know, this speaker, this speaker is too much. The speaker's not yeah. enough. You know, it's or, a balance. Or you know? the mics are too yeah. low. Or yeah. the mics are too high. We need more on the monitors and we have so. the different cue um, signals that we give to the light man, the sound man, the monitor man. Hmm. Seems to me that unlike a lot of other forms of popular music, you can't just go up there and go through the motions. You guys really have to be ready for a show. I mean, especially you yeah. with all this, the wizardry you go through, and then you guys with all the, you know. The, the rap you have to do. Yeah. I imagine you have to be in tip-top shape to go into that. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's, you have yeah. to control. It's like singing almost because you have to control your breathing. I imagine it's harder than singing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's to dance, to dance. Cause to dance and to rap and to control your breathing at the same time. You have to be in shape, brother. You can't be a fat slob up there trying to rap, I mean, and, and dance yes. at the same time. Nah. And I think <clears throat> in a 16 bar, in a 16 bar phrase anyway, rapping, we say more words. Lyrically. We do it in a 16 bar phrase. Singers only say maybe eight bars of words, really, anyway. We actually say more than six. You say 16, well, we'd be... I'm saying to be moving, to and run, this guy's saying to this guy's saying to do the step with the guys, come back on point, throw it back to ground last week, and come back on point. Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, you really get to work out there, and after, hopefully, like, the real tour, you're out of shape. It was more difficult when you when you begin a tour to do all that, but by the time you get through a tour, like a couple of weeks down, a week down, you feel that's a little bit easier now because you get in the shape and you're breathing right, and it's more control because it's all about control breathing when you when you're rapping on the mic. So um yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time to get adjusted to it, but once you get into the mainstream, once you get into the flow of it, I mean, because we do this for free. We used to do this for free on stage, so I feel we blessed to be able to go on stage and get paid and see the world and display our talents for everybody and, and make a living out of it, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, my point. goodness, I, I, can't, I can't imagine not doing this. I can't imagine to having a nine to five sitting behind the desk. And I know it couldn't be me. Not the new thing is, not to change it, the new thing is now all the DJs got to start rapping. Chris Master D's rapping on Funky Beat. So all the all DJs have to start rapping now. Yeah. To be down, the DJ, everybody's DJ is rapping now. The next thing you know, you guys are gonna have to get up there and start. That's, that's, and that's the next thing. That's the next thing. You pointed you it out. Ready for it? Yeah, I might say that my DJ plans to do more rapping and says so the ceiling as well as the new scratches, and we're backing up this way. So it's gonna be a lot. Can you handle that yourself? Uh, we won't be as good as the great grandmaster, but the best tutor around. Yeah, but you know we're going to be the fills. You know what I mean? For sure. It would be a pill in the watch. It would be nice to watch. Yeah. I to see him come from behind and one go back or two go back and, and yeah. jump into his um, boots for a minute. Like while we jump into ours. Like he while he's rapping, I'm rapping. He's in the he's rapping. I'm doing the beatbox. He's on the okay. turntable. And while the drum roll's going, he hits the microphone. He hits the turntables. I'm still so on the turntable. Really cool. And then while the drum roll going, it stops. He's still rapping. He hits the scratch, and I'm going with him to scratch, and he hits the drum box, and then we all break it down. <laughs> Then we all come back up the middle and start dancing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's crazy. You know, it's kind of funny because 
Raph's kind of coming under a lot of criticism now, especially because the, the violent incident when DMC shows. Actually, yeah. I said it was only one show. It was one show in LA that, that people got violent. It was with gangs. But I mean, at uh, any, any concert that you have when you get a lot of people cramped into one place, um, you're always going to have those kinds of incidents. And I remember, I mean, the who people got stuck, trampled to death. Yeah, and, you know, it got killed and trampled to death. And I remember I went to an Aerosmith concert in Madison Square Garden last Christmas, <laughs> and I was so scared for my life in there because, I mean, there was no type of law and order in there. People were talking about um, the raising hell, the raising hell of like puppies that they had compared to, to, to the way they were behaving in there. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just that I mean, if you're looking for something to find, you can always find something. But uh, to make the whole the whole experience a negative one is wrong. And, um, and actually, we were the ones on stage that night. We were on stage when they when they didn't even make it to the, the stage. stage. Oh, right? they, they, they didn't even make it to the stage. We were on stage. They started fighting. And usually, when a fight breaks out, you're able to continue your show because you, you you block it out. But it got so bad, it was like a wave. And, and we got everything. It. The crew was talking about the was up in the balconies, up in the mezzanines, down there. That we had to walk off stage. So we walked off stage for about half an hour, forty-five minutes. Came back on. We had to finish the whole show with every light on in, in, in the place. So we did. After we went off, it's time for Run DMC to come on. They started fighting again. And they just canceled the show from there. So Run DMC never had a chance to perform. Mm -hmm. There was three gangs in the place, actually. And they just went not stop. I mean, that's a big, tremendous gang problem. Yeah. But um, that was the worst that it ever has been. But I'm talking about in Brooklyn before rap never stopped. People used to always get shot. <laughs> you show, you saw someone starts to get shot and killed or something. So to us, it wasn't really anything. Yeah. You know what I'm but the media that was that was covering it, they kind of took really, um, they really got upset and they kind of really found it. Uh, felt, felt like they had a scoop and they, they broadcasted it and made it bigger than it actually was. But I mean, things like that happen. What I was gonna say is ironic because it seems like what you sing about is kind of. Life. Exactly. Exactly. That's why we knew it wasn't just to say that it was run the MC for. You know how hard it is in the middle of friends on one level to say, yo, stop hitting him upside his head. Friends. Friends. And they take his sneakers up in the balcony and, you know, it was like, it was the worst for us, you know. For sure. And, and what, what, what town are we in where um, they would fight? Like, we were singing on stage, and all of a sudden, somebody threw a punch, and as we were singing, you know, they threw a punch, a gang started fighting. And all of a sudden, like, ten seconds later, they were dancing. Like, oh, Detroit, happened. Detroit. They were dancing like Detroit. nothing ever happened. They cleared, then another half an hour, half a minute or so down the line, they start fighting again. As soon as security comes, they start dancing again like nothing ever happened. Every time they stop a song, they're free, they start yelling, they start fighting. We're going to start another song, they start dancing. I mean, how could you sit there and let a guy punch you in your face same time, then another song drops, and he, and you know, I think just like nothing yeah, happens. Yeah, nothing happens until the record stops again, and then they start. I was like, these guys are really, they crazy, they programmed that something's wrong here, you know. Some guys like to do that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was funny the way they had, the way they, the, the system they had worked out to how they was going to beat this guy's behind. <laughs> so, and we all stayed, we kind of laugh to ourselves, we're doing the show, but we kind of laugh, holy shit, let's see what happened. Worry, man, he got his face punched in the floor, man, 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 you know, it's time for him to rap now. And so we kind of, we kind of giggling about it. But, um, that really was the worst incident, and I don't think, um, I think it happens at every every major concert. I'm sure so they have something documented, and um, it's just it's just unfortunate that it got blown out of proportion the way it was. But it was a bad scene. But I don't think everybody should suffer because of that one incident in LA with the gangs. Because it was it was truly gangs. It wasn't like and we, we were on stage saying like, kick that guy's behind, fuck him up. We were, I mean we went there just doing our job, and then once our job is done, we're gone. We want everybody to have a good time while we're there. And it was unfortunate that it got blown out the way it did. It was real funny sometimes on the stage. We were at McDonald's. We were with that. Now, to see a guy's girl blowing a kiss at you constantly while you're doing vocals, it's so hard sometimes to keep it, like, when you're trying to, keep, trying to keep your attention on all points, my partner, as well as him. I watch him, my partner's vocals, he's coming in and listening. If he's got his breath right, or if he did something, mm -hmm. he might have did something and did distracted him or something. And I'm listening for my DJ, watching the dancers, all the cues. And to see this guy's girl, he's hugging her, and she's gone. <laughs> and he's right behind her, you know, and you're trying to be serious. <laughs> you can't, you know, when you come close, you go. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just can't help it. I bust out laughing for writing that video. The love I used to have. You just can't laugh. You know what I'm saying? This is the last one, man. So that's Cliff Love. He's the guy who does that stuff. That's the mission. That's your man. Lance is ready to come out with a jump rope record. Nah, I mean. <laughs> These guys, um, the thing about the story about Lance and Manson, Cliff Lyle, I like to say, is that when we first started out, we said we'd always like to, um, if we ever got a chance to make it, uh, we always like to be able to give somebody else a break and, and hopefully for them to make it and get them off there on their feet. So we, we had dances earlier when we did our European tour, and they turned into a, a rap group called UTFO. They had a song called Roxanne. Roxanne, they went top five on the singles charts. And so they stepped off after they had, they, they became a group. And so now this is our second generation who did the um, um, helpers. And, and they're last one, Madison Cliff Love, and they have a record deal coming out. So they're gonna be dancing with us until they become their own stars. And and, and that, that's the that's how we believe from the beginning that we would do things. We would, whatever you receive, we always want to give back what we receive. So this is just a way of us do, um, to be able to do that. And I think, I think God is looking out for us and he's taking care of us because, because of, we, we kept that in mind. So um, we always like to um, help people, and, and we're showing this. And these guys are seeing the world now. These guys are in Japan. And <laughs> I know Cliff Love ain't never thought about going to Japan. Stay Cliff Love is funny. Yeah, you know, in Japan. So they're having a good she time. And they, 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 they rocked the house she last night. Know. They're ready to rock the house again tonight. And I'm glad they're here. And they're out here for the girls and with the, and, 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 and the good time. Right, Cliff? Yeah. Cliff said it. He said he beat the Navy in jail. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, he had the best summer job possible. You know what I'm saying? He went around the Seven City Tour. He got paid. He had fun. He, um, he performed on stage and ate all the food. Got a lot of women, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of women. And a couple of guys, too, you know. Too. <laughs> what a way to start this year on the surf, man. You know what I'm saying? Incredible. Did so, you leave anything in McDonald's? You went shopping, huh? I shopped so lift and run, right? Real with that. Oh, yeah. Well, I think now that Ronald McDonald's back with it. All right. Oh, wait, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much. Did you come in the tonight? I saw him last night. So oh. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I can't get my field though. I don't know if you come back again. <laughs> Take care and uh, good luck. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to eat some McDonald's. Now we're going to do it in America. Eat. This is Carla's. What is Carla's? Oh, she wants a small fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are hot. These two last. Real with that. Real with Real down. 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 Real down.